Hey, Steven Yon here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts, doing another High Octane walk around. Now, if you love Dodge Chargers, and particularly the new Charger Banshee electric car, and you're all amped up about it, then you'll enjoy the history of Dodge Charger, which goes back to 1966. 66 and 7, the Fastbacks, 68 through 70, the Coke bottle, think Steve McQueen and Bullet, that whole great movie. Well, 71 brought us the third generation Charger seen right here. A quick way to tell a 71 is when you see this uh, marker light on the front and the back with the horizontal divider. That's a 71 specific charger. 72, they went to a, a plastic rectangular item that fits flush or a, a surface mount. But with that said, this one here has been sort of done over, a little bit of a hot rod vibe going on. But again, the charger is an interesting car. Uh, it is the B body, similar to a Plymouth Belvedere satellite, Dodge Coronet, of course, that would be this car's four door cousin. But the charger grew a lot of extra distance in the nose. And uh, some people think it looks great, some people think it looks good. I happen to like them myself. And I think about Richard Petty on the NASCAR Super Speed winners, I think about chargers like this one here, or the Hemi Charger 1971. And 71, right here, was the final year for the Hemi, uh, the Ram Charger hood, and all the heavy duty suspension that came along uh, with the 60s. In 72, they kind of decontented them to a degree. But this one here, again, has been given a lot of day two touches. But again, we look at this, and Charger, we gotta remember, never available as a four-door until more recent times, never available as a convertible. They always had a two-door hardtop body style here. And again, 1971, this interesting reverse C B pillar right here, long deck, again, the sort of semi-built-in spoiler effect on the tail. And big car. I mean, frankly, the uh, Charger was a B body, considered a midsize, but you could seat six people in one of these with the optional front bench, or five pretty comfortably uh, with the bucket seats. Now, this one here, being a 71, is the first of what we might call the, uh, the uh, large charge. Some people call them that. And again, 71 through 74 were the years for these cars right here. We've seen the outside. Now let's look at the inside. While Dodge did offer a front bench seat in a family style charger, this one's a hot rod. It has naturally a set of uh, high comfort bucket seats up front with Corbo belts, kind of cool right there. GT Grant steering wheel, aftermarket gauges from Autometer in the dashboard. And it's kind of been given sort of a, almost a pro stalker vibe inside. I like it. And importantly too, the automatic, the torque flight in the transmission on this one here is a heavy duty piece with a B&M quick silver pro ratchet. You just go first, second, drive, and you don't have to worry about over shifting or messing up with the detente. So very tasteful inside. Again, the Dodge Charger, a close coupled um, pony car, if you will, a muscle car from the 70s and uh, inside and out, pretty appealing place to be. But we all know the most important thing of any car is what's on the other side of that firewall under the hood. Speaking of the hood, all you Mopar fanatics out there will recognize this as the 1969 and a half Roadrunner and Super B six pack hood scoop right here. And again, it's a classic of Mopar hood scoop design, readily available from Direct Connection then as now, and it's been added to this Charger hood. And better than that even is the fact this hood is fiberglass. It's not steel, so it's lighter than stock, but looks the part. But again, street racer vibe right here. But again, under that hood, what have we got? Well. Let's pop the pins. Yeah, big block power. That's cool. That's a 400 cubic inch Mopar big block V8. This one has an Edelbrock Performer RPM dual plane intake, aluminum, Holly four barrel carburetor, steel tube headers, a Power Master alternator, MSD distributor. So all the goodies to add up to probably 400 horsepower right there. And Good thing too is to keep it cool is the Crossflow Victory Radiator in aluminum, which will keep that 400 cubic inch nice and cool as you're cruising in or out of the drag strip or on the mass pike or wherever you might want to drive this. Another nice detail too is the Mopar Performance Direct Connection aluminum water pump, which replaces the iron one and saves about 20 pounds off the nose of the car. An auto meter fuel pressure gauge isolator to match the auto meter gauge inside for your fuel pressure to let you know that you've got 6 PSI. And of course, an aftermarket aluminum master cylinder dual circuit with a proportioning valve here, which allows you to manipulate brake proportioning from front to back. And speaking of those brakes, 
We have discs up front. These are Chrysler disc brakes. They're about 12 inches in diameter. There's nothing wrong with those. And out back, the heavy duty 11 inch drums we see right here, we can know, we know they're 11 inch drums because as we look through these weld racing star wheels, we can see there's no air gap between the edge of the spoke and the drum. These are the 11 inch by two and a half inch heavy duty drums found on Hemi cars and Super Bs. And again, between those drums is the eight and three quarter axle, which is readily available and will totally handle this 400 cubic inch big blocks output. So that's the story of 1971, the first year for the third generation Dodge Charger. And of course, Charger, the name would live on in many iterations, including a front wheel drive, yeah, the L bodies of the 1980s, the Charger 2.2s, and of course, even the four doors of today with Hemi power. But again, if you want a rear wheel drive, traditional big block Dodge Charger muscle car, 1971 was the final year.